ericmothersmother.com. Let's take a look at the markets here as we come to the conclusion of the month and for the day and for the week. Let's take a look at how things are going to settle out here. We can see pretty much a nice day. We can say unchanged, but for the most part, we can call this a very strong month for the month of August 2018. So a good finish to the month. Let's take a look at those charts. And since we've closed for the month, let's take a look at the big picture charts, the monthlies, the weeklies, and the dailies. I'll try and stay as far away from the smaller time frames because this is the time to be looking at the big picture, given that we've just concluded a huge month and a huge gain for the market for the month. All right, let's begin with the S&P 500. We can see for the month, S&P 500 finally cleared January's monthly closing high. And as long as we are holding above 2.8, 23.81 there's nothing stopping this market from continuing higher especially given where the RSI is trading above 69.1 so this remains a strong market as long as we are holding above that number now of course since we are at the end of the month we can watch this should there be any price drop back below that level that would be a serious question as to whether the market has strength for higher prices or not. But for now, we have to take what we see, which is a quality breakout on the monthly above the previous monthly closing high. If we take a look at the weekly for the SPX, we can see here we managed to end the week and the month with a follow through, or let's call it a back to back breakout on consecutive weeks above the previous weekly closing high from January and that level was at 2872.87 as long as we are above this weekly closing high and especially especially if the market can reclaim the level above 69.1 on the weekly if it can reclaim that level, then definitely this is a market that is going to pick up pace to the upside. It would be similar to this phase here, where we held above 69.1 and we had this amazing finish before the pullback. So the key here is whether we hold or whether we move above the 69.1 level and since we close just a tad below that level it won't take much for the market to move above 69.1 and press to, to brand new highs so watching the 69.1 level in the coming week and weeks is something we have to do so that we can determine the type of strength or weakness the market might be going into Again, the S&P 500 had a quality week. This past week, it broke out above the previous daily closing highs, which happens to be also the previous weekly closing highs. And again, as long as we are above this January daily closing high, we have to assume that this market has the opportunity and the desire for higher prices. Now, of course, a drop back below this price would indicate a market that is starting to run out of momentum. Now, it would be similar from a visual perspective to this period here, as an example, that is, where we try to break out, we fail, and then we have this push low. And on the other hand, for a successful breakout, you want to see something, let's say, like this breakout here. Where you break out, and as long as you hold above the breakout level, you have the opportunity to record a strong push. 
So right now, the way we ended the week, as long as the, the S&P 500 is above this level, we have to assume that higher prices are consistent with this look. Now, of course, we know that the NASDAQ broke out months ago and continues to be leadership. The breakout here was 7411.48 after it eclipsed this monthly closing high and it's been on a pretty much five month straight up gain move. And we also know that the more we continue holding above 69.1, the way this resolves is with a hyperbolic finish. Something stronger than this. Visually, let's take a look at what I mean. Visually, hyperbolic move is something like this. So let's say, let's say we're here. That's the breakout. So visually, just to explain what I mean. So we are here. In relative terms, we are here. We were here in 2000, 1998, 99. Hyperbolic finish I'm talking about is here. Notice what the RSI does. It picks up momentum. And actually the similarities are there. What I mean by that is throughout this very desirable process here, you'll notice the RSI stayed above, pretty much defended the 50 RSI level, including Support at the RSI 50. Support at the RSI 50. Now this is in 94. This is 98. And this period from here to here, we're talking about roughly 9 years, give or take. Notice the similarity here. This period also, we see the NASDAQ holding above RSI 50. Held 50 here, held 50 here, held 50 here, and held 50. And again, we are talking about roughly about 9 years. Now, these are just some similarities. The key takeaway is the more we hold above 69.1, the more this type of hyperbolic move becomes very likely. This becomes very likely. And of course, the other argument, which is also valid, is we might have already seen the hyperbolic move because it's not like this is not a, a good, powerful move here. It truly is. And if you want to see why it truly is a very powerful phase in the market, take a look at some of the following stocks. This is Amazon. So at some point, when you start seeing an instrument recording its biggest monthly gains ever, biggest continuous monthly move, that means we are close to an end. Generally speaking, once you start seeing an instrument record this type of hyperbolic move, it means that there's an end is very close. It could, it could even be higher, but the end is very near. Now that's Amazon. Take a look at, take a look at Apple also. This is the biggest continuous move in one month we've seen ever. So what that means is that we are getting closer and closer to the end here. Let's take a look at the next random stock here. MED. You can see that this is unsustainable. There's just no way to keep this going. 
This only happens in a extremely, extremely bullish general market environment. That's the only way. But notice here how the RSI is above 69.1. Let's take a look at one more. Now you can see here, this is a dream move. Stuff dreams are made out of. At some point, this is going to pop. And it's actually going to be nasty after it pops. So what I'm saying here is that it could be that we've already seen the hyperbolic move. It's just happening in some stocks. Now, I believe the market is giving us a great opportunity here to gauge the market strength. This is a great opportunity because now the Dow has come close enough to its previous monthly closing high of 26, 149.39, which is January's monthly closing high. So I think here it is very simple. If the Dow can break out, then the hyperbolic move is pretty much locked in if it can break out and hold above this level. Now on the other hand, if the Dow is unable to sustain levels above the previous monthly closing or the current monthly closing high, in other words, if the Dow fails to break out, watch out. This could turn ugly. So I believe it's a very good gauge. It's one number for next month. Anything above this price is absolutely a screaming buy for the Dow and the general market. And failure to hold above this number is a reason to be extremely, extremely cautious. Now we can say as of right now, the Dow breakout stalled because it did, it did, st it did trade above this level for a little bit. I believe was on Thursday, but did not close above it. So we keep watching this number for guidance. And of course, we don't get any major drop in the market as long as the Dow is holding above 69.1. For there to be a huge drop, the Dow would have to drop back below the 69.1 level. But to simplify this video, this is the number to watch for the next month. The Dow breakout, either it's going to be successful or whether it's going to st struggle to break out, is going to tell us the market's intent. Now, one of the things we need to look at are the weekly charts. Take a look at the Dow's weekly chart in relation to the NASDAQ and S&P 500. The Dow is ways off from breaking out on the weekly. Now, compare this weekly chart to that of the S&P 500 which is now above its January weekly closing highs. Now compare this with the NASDAQ weekly chart, where we can see there was actually an earlier attempt to break out. Let's just do it this way. Now this was unsuccessful at the time. And of course, after that failed breakout, we have this drop. Where does that drop end or find support? At the RSI 50. So we can see that there is a possibility that the Dow eventually might have to join the NASDAQ and S&P 500. If it can break out on the monthly successful, this becomes the next target. Over the last couple of weeks, in fact months, I've been talking about this line here. And this has been resistance for quite some time. You can even say this was resistance here. But now, let's just assume this is movement above the blue line. That is good. Unless, of course, unless we collapse back below the blue line. But net-net, this looks good. 
because it is above the line that was has been stalling the Dow for quite some time. Compare this with the S&P 500 weekly chart. And now we can see after some period of resistance here, we finally went above it. So if the S&P 500 can do this, the Dow can also do the same thing. And the NASDAQ you can see this week is above the line. In fact, the NASDAQ is above the 69.1 threshold. So the more it holds above 69.1, the more we are inviting this type of a move where we eventually pick up momentum as long as the RSI is above 69.1. So in relative terms, we are right here, which is here. The more we hold above 69.1, the more we can expect this to start picking up momentum. Now keep in mind the inverse is also true in that should we fail, and let me show you a period here. We fail to hold above 69.1 here, which leads to a pullback, a shallow pullback at the time. And where did this find support? Right here, around the RSI 61.8. So you never know when you start seeing a pullback what's going to happen because you could just find support at the RSI 50, which would stop the slide. And in some severe cases, of course, you break below 50 and you see a massive plunge. So right now what I'm trying to say is that coming into the end of the month and going into a new week, new month, we can watch the NASDAQ. The more the RSI on the weekly holds above 69.1, we know that even on a week to week basis, we are looking at a very strong market. At the same time, movement back below 69.1 with uniform activity is a sign similar to here that we are in a pullback mode. Now those looking for a reason to be cautious in terms of where the market is going. We can see here from the Dow Transports, we've had two weeks trying to break out above the current weekly closing high from January. And for the Dow Transports, this is at 11,373.38. So over the last two weeks, we've traded above this level intra week, but have failed to close above it. So net net, we can say, that this is looking like a failed breakout attempt. Now, of course, it could go on and break out successfully, which is always possible. But what I'm saying here is the more we fail to hold and break out, for example, if we start turning down here, that's not a good sign for the Dow Transports. It's something to watch. Again, we see another level where we know that if it holds above this level, that's net bullish. And if it continues to struggle to hold this level, that's net bearish. And so we can say here over the last two weeks, net net, the Dow transports have failed to break out, which is net bearish, or at least tends to ask the question as to whether the market really has any strength or is just setting up for some type of a serious pullback. Again, we are always have to be cautious for breakout levels. It would be similar to this period here. If we take the intraday highs, we can see that there was multiple breakout attempts that failed. And ultimately, we get the pullback. Similarly, we also have the same type of situation. Here, if we take the intraday lows, we try to break down here. That was unsuccessful. The market would ultimately recover. So right now, we are looking at the exact opposite, which is failure to break out and the more it fails to break out the more we know that eventually this is enough to start bringing this market lower now also on the monthly for the Dow transports we can watch this RSI 69.1 level the reason why I say that is we spent a lot of time this past month 
trading above 69.1 but we closed below it so which means that if we end up starting to move away from this level in the new month in September that's not a good sign also we can watch the Dow Transport's monthly closing high from January because this has been a breakout market and the level here is one we can watch because should we fail to hold above this level that would also be another indication of a market that is due for a sizable drop so anything above this price yet again is bullish and failure to hold above this level would be enough to suggest that this market is due for a reversal lower especially once we see that the RSI is failing to hold above the 69.1 level. So we can watch this for guidance. Right now we can see the weekly looks suspect and the monthly RSI looks suspect unless it can find enough energy to move back above the 69.1 level in the coming months. So one of the charts that we were watching this past, or I was watching this past month, was the semiconductor index. And we can continue watching this. And let me give you a price to watch. It is 1379. This goes back to this closing high on a, on a monthly basis. We closed above it, which is bullish. We also closed back above 69.1. Now the reason why I bring this up is Earlier, at some point last month or the month of August, we were trading below 69.1 and this breakout was stalling. And it looked, the setup looked set for a nasty pullback in the coming months. So we did recover, but I believe that if we go on to fail to hold this price level, if the RSI drops back below 69.1, that is not a good look. And this goes back to what I was saying. You can see this rejection at the 69.1 level here of the high there. So you can see that if we end up having a similar type rejection at the 69.1 level, that would also suggest this is a major high and that we are due for a substantial drop similar to this period here so that's why i'm saying we need to watch the 69.1 level for the trans for the semiconductor index because anything back below 69.1 is an ominous sign because it would be something similar to this rejection here so that's why i'm still watching this for guidance Switch gears here a little bit, take a look at commodities. We're going to begin with DZZ, which I mentioned on Thursday. And the reason was because I saw that it was finding support at its RSI 50 level, which also is a sign that it wants to hold. And we can see the last time we bounced on the RSI 50 was here, and we've been holding coming back since the break here so once we clear this level here it's been coming back to the RSI 50 finding support and moving high so the more we continue holding above 50 the more this favors the possibility of higher prices as long as that can continue being the case also on the on the weekly chart we can see that the RSI is back above 69.1. So if it wants to move higher, it needs to hold above 69.1. Of course, the next challenge is whether it can break out, if it can break out, above the recent weekly closing high. And the level to watch here is for a breakout above 6.65. So if it can clear this weekly closing high, that will be bullish for DZZ and bearish for the GLD, bearish for gold. So this would be the next logical breakout level. 
Otherwise, you can wait for a future higher breakout, which would be this monthly closing high as an alternative. Down the road, if and when it breaks out above 6.89, 86 actually, if it can break out above that price down the road, that will be good because that will be corresponding with the RSI and MACDs moving to three-year highs. So what we need here is a price breakout on the monthly above 8.86. That would take the RSI to three-year highs. Would take the MACD to three-year highs, which would meet the minimum requirements for the ultimate Moade breakout. So those, the weekly and the monthly buy points are something we should track should it move above those levels. Now, I want to discuss something here, which is the monthly chart. And I think the monthly chart here could also be a trap now that the month is over. You can see that this instrument struggled when it broke down here. And now it's coming back to test the same level. So we definitely, ha definitely have to be careful here because resistance here on the RSI would suggest that around here is where it stalls. Now this is consistent actually with the other big picture charts. For example, let's take a look at UUP, the dollar ETF. And I'm going to zoom in here so we can see it a little bit better. And what I've been saying here about the dollar, in my opinion, is that there's this possibility which I see would make sense that this is going to be a problem this line here unless it can clear that level it also corresponds with this break of the highs and that is also being tested so the blue line and the red line in my opinion, could be one of the reasons why we see that UUP, the dollar, is coming off these highs here because of the monthly chart. Now, of course, on a month-to-month -month basis, movement back below these two lines would be net bearish for the dollar, short term or at least month-to-month. -month. So I think this is a challenge for the dollar. For it to move higher and push commodities lower, it would need to clear and trade above those two lines. Now this is also similar in an inverse way to gold. Take a look at the gold monthly chart and we can see if we take this movement here of the RSI corresponding with this entry and gold hasn't been back to those levels so we can draw our uniformity support line or bullish line should be something like that now we came close for the lows here and now we are here again the question is are we going to find support this time or are we going to break through it if we bounce on this line that means that month to month gold should be stabilizing around here and start coiling to the upside we also have to be aware a break below the blue line would be a disaster for gold and you can expect much much lower prices for gold and GLD now if you take a look at the dollar one of the things I don't like about this dollar chart currently is this movement in in the price action here has come with the expense of the MACDs which are making lower highs and I think this negative divergence is an issue I think that does not look good for the dollar I just get the sense that this is not a strong looking chart given the monthly chart view if you take a look at the daily we can see the daily is giving us a great opportunity 
to continue tracking the 50-day moving average. And to keep it as simple as possible here, as long as we are holding above this 50-day moving average, we can assume that the dollar is stable to bullish. Otherwise, failure to hold this level would confirm the bearish potential that we see on the monthly chart. Now, that's a good example here. Remember when we talk, I was talking about the Dow transports? You can see what happens here when you have a series of failed breakouts, just like we did here for gold. After all these multiple attempts, after all this, finally, that was enough to get people asking questions as to whether what was gold's intention. So, you know, ultimately we roll over because of this series of failed breakouts. Now, on the other hand, right now, the last thing gold bulls want to see is GLD moving below the recent weekly closing low. And the level to watch there for GLD is 112.13. Anything below that level would be pretty much confirming downside momentum is still in play. Also, you don't want the RSI to drop below 30.9. That would suggest it's going to have to take out the recent price lows. And of course, we've been observing that as long as the GDX continues to trade above 30.9, we can continue expecting this type of a sideways to down market. So as long as the weekly RSI is above 69, rather, above is below, excuse me, is below 30.9, expect this to continue being a market that is sideways at best, bearish at worst. If you take a look at the long-term monthly chart for GDX, we can see that this is becoming an an area where in the coming weeks and months could be where it finds stability because of this uniformity line here so it's a huge question mark here we know that if it can bounce above this line with uniform action that that is good enough to begin the recovery and failure to hold above the blue line movement below this blue line would suggest that it's gonna see substantially lower prices well below the low for the month which was at 18.15 so either we're going to get support here in the coming weeks or we're going to break down and we're going to see a major drop as far as the gold mining stocks are concerned but in my opinion given the dollar chart the gold chart itself this seems like an area to watch and start anticipating the possibility of a recovery in gold and you'll know that is about to take place or in the process if you find support and it starts coiling up as far as the monthly chart is concerned again it's a monthly chart which means it's gonna take months to play out oh another great example here of what happens when you have a series of failed breakouts so those multiple failed breakouts here in 2011 and those correspond with the highs around that time period of course since then we've seen a major drop in the GDX and in gold now if we take a look at the XLE I'll draw the lines I've been drawing over the last couple of weeks and why I have been looking for short ideas in this area of the market because of this resistance on the monthly chart That's the XLE, the energy ETF. As long as it is below this, the RSI is below this blue line, we are still looking at a market here that ultimately over time, in time, looks like it is still poised for lower prices. Same thing with the XOP, the oil and gas exploration ETF. We can draw a line here also corresponding with this break and this is one of the reasons why I have been looking for short ideas in this space because of this resistance 
Now what I want to do next is a little different and exact opposite. If you take a look at XOP, if it can break out above the recent monthly closing high, the picture here changes significantly. So I would say the level to watch here is for any breakout that takes it above 43.06 would actually be very bullish. So a breakout above this level is one to be on the lookout for. And of course the reason is a breakout would push the RSI and MACDs to three year highs. So of course a price breakout would move the RSI to three year highs and would also push the MACDs. In fact, we can say the MACDs are already trading at three year highs and in fact also moving above zero. So watch movement above 43.06 because if it breaks out, then this is poised for a substantial, for a substantial move to the upside as long as it holds above 43.06. For XLE, similar situation. If it can break out above the recent monthly closing high, keep in mind we've had one month of rest, which is the required rest period. So any movement above 7.7. 7, 0.12 going back to this monthly close any breakout above that level would actually be very bullish if and when it happens again the reason here is very simple that would coincide with the RSI moving to three year highs we can see that one of the MACDs is already trading at three year highs which meets our minimum requirement so watch 77.12 because a breakout above that level would actually change the expectation and you can see an, an amazing run in the space. Similarly, for crude oil, you can also continue watching a future breakout should it happen above the recent monthly closing high. And that would be for a breakout above 74.15 if crude oil can break out above this price that would actually be very bullish and again why because that would be moving the rsi and macd's to three year highs you can also mention uso its buy point is at 1506 we need to be careful here because if it can break out above 1506, it means that the energy space is going to be on fire with great momentum to the upside. And again here, why? Because that would push the RSI and the MACD is already trading at three year highs. In fact, the MACD here is starting to move above zero. The only thing left here is for price breakout above 15.0. Six, And of course, I've been talking about UNG. If it can clear either this breakout here at 23.34, in fact, it closed above that. So we can say on a very short term basis, it is starting to act good. But I would say this is a better breakout because I would really push the MACD, the RSI to three year highs. So the next breakout level to watch as an entry option is movement above 25.08. If it can clear that level, then definitely that would be pushing the, MAC, the RSI to three year highs. You can see right now the RSI is not right there. It would need a higher move in price. And that's why I think 25.08, which is January's monthly closing high, is a better entry point in terms of a breakout possibility or breakout level to watch. One of the MACDs is already trading at three year highs. So a breakout above 25.08 would, would meet the minimum requirements for the ultimate Moade breakout. All right, let's finish this by taking a look at Bitcoin. And it is trading at about 7,000. 15 
Let's take a look at the charts here. And I'm going to begin with the big picture because of the end of month charts coming in play. So we can see here on the monthly chart for BTC that it needs to hold above the RSI 50 level. In fact, it would be nice if it can coil up because that would be indication of double bottom support around the RSI 50. Now, that would be good. But if it continues making new lows, that would also be bearish. In fact, the MACD is also at an interesting point. If you take the previous lows, you can see that what is needed here over time is movement back above zero. That will be bullish. Now, what we've been seeing with the cryptos is most of them have been making fresh all-time MACD lows. And so the same continues here for Bitcoin. The more the MACDs continue trading at all-time lows, the more the MACDs continue trading below zero, the more we are going to have to test recent lows, if not end up breaking below them. So the monthly charts here are going to play some important role as we go into the new month. The last thing bulls want to see is the MACD is moving to all-time lows in the new month because that would be suggesting that we are still in a strong downwards phase. And of course bulls want to see it hold and coil back over time, coil back above the zero line. That would be net bullish. If we take a look at BTC from a weekly chart, this line continues to hold. And this is actually constructive. If you consider that we were making lower lows here, but generally we've held above the blue line. Yes, we've gone below it, but we've managed to recapture it. This is good as long as it continues holding. I think the big takeaway, in my opinion, is the MACD. If the MACD can climb back above zero, this would actually ignite momentum to the upside on a week-to-week -week basis. So that's something to watch there. Otherwise, unfortunately for bulls, if we end up coiling back below zero, that's net bearish. If we take a look at the daily for Bitcoin, it's something I talked about in a previous video, I believe from Wednesday. If you consider this reversal here of the highs at about 12,000, maybe 11,700, and draw a line from that break point, you can see that this is where there seems to be some struggle. So in the short term, if Bitcoin is to move higher, it needs to clear this line. We also talked about the daily closing high here. Now what has happened over the last couple of days is it's been tested. But ever since it moved above it, it hasn't closed back below this price. So we can say that we can continue using that for guidance. Anything that keeps it above 6873.3, which is this daily closing high. Anything above this price is net positive. And one can continue holding. Hope that makes sense. So anything above this price gives you a reason to hold Bitcoin and the other cryptos as long as that is holding. The more it holds and moves higher, this is constructive. And of course, we know that if it fails to hold that price, that's a net negative. And one can expect a test of these lows here. If not a test, maybe even a violation and a break below them. Stick here at the four hourly chart. And here we can see short term while it's struggling. If we take a look at the break. So on the four hourly chart, 
we can see that this is where the struggle is coming in the short term. We would need to move above this line if BTC is to move higher. But I think the best way to look at cryptos right now, in my opinion, is to watch how they are responding to this price level based on this daily closing high. So the cryptos can be a risk buy and hold. Of course, everything is always is always a risk, but I'm saying anything above 6873.3, anything above this would be bullish for the cryptos and for Bitcoin. Anything back below that is a reason to be cautious, maybe even close that swing trade opportunity. Otherwise, I'll stop right there. Enjoy your weekend and especially enjoy your long weekend. This is Eric Mother.com. As always, I'll keep you guys posted in the new month, in the new week. Peace and blessings. E-A-C-S. Woo!